What is going on guys? Welcome back to the yet another AMC video. We appreciate you joining us today and your support. There are significant uncertainties as to whether it is officially time to begin shorting the major banks. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel before I begin. It is no longer a secret that Wall Street has been in a somewhat precarious position over the course of the previous few months. I would estimate that this began in the beginning of 2021, when they were reorganizing their books, whether in the crypto market or the securities sector. However, things are not looking so good overall. We experienced one of the worst years for trading equities and bonds in the past century, as Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve continued to boost interest rates to battle inflation, the market continues to deteriorate. And it appears that the interconnection of the markets is being publicly exposed as we once again observe big fundamental problems, this time in the cryptocurrency market. Now, there were a number of crypto-related stories in 2022, including the Celsius and 3 disaster and Celsius's most recent court decision. There's also the Terra Luna collapse, followed by the mother of all Ponzi schemes, FTX which appears to be one of the largest Ponzi scams ever. But we'll begin with the reality that so many large funds and individuals, including Kevin O'Leary, Tom Brady, Sequoia, and Paradigm, who also invested in Citadel, are now writing down their investments to zero because, honestly, nobody knows whether they'll ever get their money back. Someone posted a link to this story on our Superstock subreddit. I believe it's from a coin-related website. Coindesk regrets to inform you that the troubled cryptocurrency company FTX wanted to sell its functional units, including Ledger X. They filed for bankruptcy protection last month, claiming that their liabilities exceeded $10 billion. Now, once more, all eyes are on FTX, whether it's Ledger or X, since the FTX options, derivatives, and swaps machine is being auctioned. Now it appears that they are attempting to sell the evidence before to the hearing which raises the question of who received these exchanges. Was FTX accepting swaps from third parties? And how many large Wall Street firms were involved with FTX in relation to the current situation? It also begs the question of why Wall Street has not yet experienced a big margin call that would require them to liquidate their short bets in businesses such as GameStop and AMC. Again, a document asserts that Elaine to CEO Carolyn Ellison's FTX margin position in May of 2022 was $1.3 billion. Currently, FTX did not decline till November 8th or November 9th. Therefore, from May to November, they were aware that these problems existed. Yet they ignored them and pretended that everything was okay behind closed doors. The question is why are we not yet wealthy? Enter your response here. Same as before the crime. At this moment, they continue to commit a staggering amount of crimes on a daily basis, as expected. Given that we live in a fair, egalitarian, efficient, and transparent market, this is about all we can realistically expect from Wall Street. However, we are none of these things at present. However, we can also anticipate a rise in the rate of criminality, including in the meme stock baskets individual stocks. Now, once again, we must recall that in January of 2021, limits were placed on a number of equities, including AMC and GameStop. When they experienced difficulty with Apex clearing Robinhood, received a $2 billion margin call, and Citadel was forced to loan them money over time. Again, this is a TD Ameritrade official on January 28, 2021, speaking to CNBC about the limits they imposed on GameStop prior to Robinhood making them the first to impose restrictions on GameStop and AMC. The journalist asked TD Ameritrade exactly why people are not permitted to purchase the dip and why trading instruments are disappearing. And honestly, the response is not necessarily what I had hoped for. Let's have a peek. Let's bring in JJ Kinahan, Chief Market Strategist at TD Ameritrade, as our final expert. They believe they might be able to buy on a downturn as a result of their trading tools vanishing. They may not. What is the rationale for that? Therefore, John, I would want to explain the message a bit. I cannot speak for other companies, but I can speak for myself. I believe some individuals may have misunderstood what we said at TD Ember Trade. John, here's what it is. You may still purchase any shares. You may sell the shares you possess. You cannot sell the stock short. But part of the reason is that these equities are difficult to borrow. Therefore, 
Shares must be borrowed in order to be sold through retail brokerage firms. Therefore, there's now nowhere to borrow it. You are therefore not shorting the stock. However, if you intend to trade the stock, the answer is no. Have we increased the margins on certain items? Certainly, we have. Why? Because this trading is unprecedented in terms of volatility. Furthermore, when it comes to volatility, consumers desire to trade options. I've been professionally trading options for 21 years. I'm convinced that volatility creates opportunities. However, Lindsay touched on something crucial, namely education. If you choose to purchase calls or puts with us, you are welcome to do so. Why? You can characterize this danger. You are aware of how much you can lose with the premium you pay. We do not permit naked short selling of calls. John, why? Theoretically, this stock may increase indefinitely. I anticipate that you will respond, well, that doesn't happen with the equities I purchase. But, you know, that's just how we operate. Of course. In fact, though, this may occur. In the past few days, GameStop and numerous other businesses made unprecedented moves. So we know that this is possible. And with that, we're simply implementing the rules that we believe make the most sense for the current volatility conditions while still allowing our clients to trade in the manner in which the majority of clients trade on a daily basis. Again, gentlemen, it is intriguing to hear that they claim that all they're doing right now is prohibiting naked options trading, right? Which, honestly, I have no problem with. However, we must also recall that numerous brokers, including TD Ameritrade, ultimately place restrictions on trading instruments that might be utilized. Now, someone has posted a fantastic comment here. It's the original poster requesting for third-party confirmation that Charles Schwab and TD Ameritrade did not impose any restrictions. Again, the House Financial Services report has a wealth of information within footnotes. We did saw a TD Ameritrade impose limits on GameStop beginning on January 13. The fact that they concur with these was viewed as judicious, but there are still limitations that other brokers did not face. TD will increase its margin to 100% beginning January 13. Once they do, they will be able to appropriately value it since it will no longer be on their books. This hedge is similar to what hedge funds are doing with AMC, only they are attempting to disguise their short positions or rehypothecate them in order to sell them to other hedge funds or banks. That's the case, correct? Just prior to the final breath, once smaller hedge funds begin to scramble, we will know that the end is near. They will act as if nothing is wrong until it is 1000% clear. Things are in disarray, and they cannot remain solvent. Their investors and livelihoods are at stake so they will battle to the death like injured wild animals cornered in a tight space. Therefore, all we need to do is maintain our commitment and recognize that we are closer than ever before. Anyway, this concludes the video for today. Thank you so much again for joining us. Please give me a like and subscribe to my channel while you are there. Visit Moomoo in order to sell some free stock. We look forward to seeing you next time.